Hello, by the end of this video, you should be ready to take your digital AP exam. If you are viewing the, when you, I'm sorry, when you view the slides or the PDF version of this, you'll notice that there is a link on the bottom of each slide that'll take you to the AP digital testing guide. So let's start off with our four readiness steps for students. First, you're gonna need to download and install the digital testing app. If you are using a school-issued Chromebook, this will have been done for you, and we'll get to how you check and access that in a minute. After you have downloaded and installed the digital testing app, you'll be able to practice with sample questions in the digital testing app. Three days before your exam, you will need to complete your exam setup for each digital exam you're taking. I'm going to repeat that a bunch of times throughout this video. I'm going to do it again right now because it's very important. You need to complete each exam setup for each test you are taking. And then finally, 30 minutes before each exam, you will need to check into the exam. That is also crucial. If you do not start your check into the exam process 30 minutes before the exam, you may not be able to take the exam and have to schedule a makeup. So let's move on to downloading and installing the digital testing app. So starting April 8th, which has passed this, you will be able to download and install the testing application, or for those of you using a school-issued Chromebook, the school will have pushed the app out to your devices. So let's start with the students using a school-issued Chromebook. If you are not one of those students, if you're a student using a non-Chromebook personal device, you can skip this page or, or just hold off on the video. Uh, so anyway, starting with your school-issued Chromebook, you are going to sign out and restart the device. You only need to restart the Chromebook the first time. This kind of refreshes it a little bit and pushes out any application that was sent to your Chromebook. Once restarted, do not log in. You will not be logging into your Chromebook at all during testing. In the lower left hand of your screen, you'll see a grid that says apps and when you click on it one of the apps that comes up should be your 2021 digital AP exams. If you've taken the NJSLA in the past uh, this should be familiar it's in the same spot as the TestNav app. You will need your College Board username and password to log into the digital testing application. Uh, once you have installed the digital testing application you will use that for testing and you can also use it for practice exam setup and uh, check-in. You can only use one device. Now for those students who must download the testing app on the device they're using. So anyone not using a Chromebook, you will go to this link right here and it will take you to a page that will give you the instructions and let you download the app. It's when you go to the page, it actually knows what type of machine you are accessing it from. So if you have a Mac, it'll give you the Mac download. If you have a PC, it'll give you the PC download and the instructions. You'll see this is kind of a, a blown up version of the page that you'll see when you click on that previous link. Also, if you need more detailed uh, download instructions, install instructions you can click right here or go to tinyurl.com backslash AP download instructions. Step two, now you're going to start practicing with sample questions in the digital testing application. So after you download the digital testing application, uh, you can access the practice for each of the subjects or all the subjects that you are signed up to test in. Uh, students can answer each type of question that you'll encounter on exam day, confirm the technology works, which is always good, and access their your responses and answer key scoring guidelines. Step three, completing the exam setup. Now again, you need to do this for each digital exam you are taking. Three days before each digital exam, you must complete the setup no later than the day before the exam for each digital exam you take. So three calendar days before your exam, this is when you can do your setup. 
but you can't do it any later than the day before the exam. So it's something to think about if you have an exam on Thursday and an exam on the following Friday, you can't set up both exams at the same time. You have to remember to go back and set up for the Friday exam. And again, you must set up for each digital exam. And once you have completed exam setup on your computer, you cannot share that device with another person for setup. Each computer, each device is only going to be able to test one, one person. Again, you're completing this exam setup for each exam. You can access the exam setup by launching that digital testing app and signing in with your College Board username and password. Then you should find your exams on the My Test and Start Exam Setup. Your digital exams will not appear until five days before the exam date. And the things you'll be asked to do are read and accept the terms and conditions, confirm personal information, check device requirements, provide permission to reuse answers, review the exam day checklist, watch a quick video, and wait for the application to check device settings. Again, for each exam. And step four. On exam day, 30 minutes before exam day, you will need to check in to your exams to your exam. You check into your exam by launching the digital testing application. So for example, if you have a digital test at 12 p.m., check-in opens at 11.30 a.m. If you have a test at 3.30 p.m., I'm sorry, if you have a test at 4 p.m., you will be checking in at 3.30. Some important notes here. Students should only check in on the device that they're using to complete the exam. You can't check in on multiple devices. If you are unable to start the check-in process before the start time of the exam, you will not be allowed to test and will be asked to request a makeup exam. So make sure you get in there 30 minutes ahead of time and get all set up. You will click the check in now to check in. You will be asked to type a security statement, review the test day checklist, enter secure mode, and then wait until the exam begins, paying attention to the timer that counts down to the exam start time. Now we are gonna move on to our digital testing the experience. So here are some of the tools and features you'll see on your digital test. You have a di the directions, a timer, your reference materials, your help menu, zooming in and out, and expand right and expand left arrows under the more. You can practice with all the tools beginning April 8th. If the app crashes or a student exits for any reason, you can relaunch the app. However, the timer will still be counting down. Important features of digital AP exams. Full length. As with paper and pencil exams, digital exams are full length exams with a section one and a section two split by break. The exam timing is governed by the digital testing application and timing varies by exam. What that's saying is, like we said in the previous slide, if you get logged off or you have to restart your computer, the timer doesn't freeze. Everyone that's taking that test at that time is working with the same timer. Your question types. Most exams have two main types of questions, multiple choice and free response. Whenever you see these little sirens, that means uh, it's really important. I even added a fourth siren to make sure you knew it was really, really, really important. You will not be able to go back if you skip ahead. So if you skip ahead to a different question, you will not be able to go back and access any previous questions. So this is one of many security features as part of the test. Um, whereas a paper test, you might be able to go back to the previous page. You will not be able to do that on the digital AP exams. If you want to see an exam, more exam format information, you can click on the link or visit cb.org backslash AP 2021 exam format. Answering questions on digital AP exams. Again, no going back, no going back. Students can't go back. If you th think you can go back, you can't. Just remember that. 
So multiple choice section. The digital testing application will remind students that they, guess what, can't go back. Whenever they attempt to move on from their first multiple choice question, attempt to leave a multiple choice question they have not answered. Now in your free response section, the digital testing application will remind students that they can, can't go back whenever they attempt to leave a free response question. So not only do my sirens remind you, you can't go back, but when you try, to, when you go to the next question or leave a free response question, you will be, should be prompted that says, hey, you're not gonna be able to go back. The multi-part free response questions. On the free response questions that have multiple parts that are answered on separate screens, students will be able to go back and forth between parts of the question they're answering because you're essentially answering the same question. It just has multiple parts. Once they answer the last part of the question and go on to the next one, guess what, everybody? You cannot go back to any part of the last question. So key takeaway, can't go back. There are several types of multiple choice questions in the digital exam experience. Some are centered on the screen. Others have material on the left and the question and answers on the right. And just like on the paper and pencil exam, AP Computer Science Principles, AP Physics 1 and AP Physics 2 exams have some questions that require students to select the two correct answer options. So make sure that you are reading all the directions and make sure that you are answering as many, or choosing as many answers as you are asked to. Break between sections. All right, so in the digital exam experience, you do have a break between sections. So at the conclusion of section one, you, students will get a 20 minute break. They'll see a break screen with a timer counting down the time until the start of the next section. Now remember, everyone is on that same 20 minute break time as well. So if you're taking the test with someone in Texas, you guys both have the both both have the same 20 minute break. Students must understand the exam resumes automatically when the break ends. If you aren't in your seat and ready to test before the end of the break, you're going to lose time. Students must not exit the app or close their laptop screen, and students may not communicate with their teacher or any other exam taker. Students should not remove the testing device from the testing room. So if you're doing this at home, you shouldn't if you're doing this in your bedroom, you shouldn't take the computer and move it to the kitchen. Um, part of this is security. Part of it is also when you get a good, when you're connected, you don't want to do anything that might disturb that connection. In some subjects, section one and or section two are divided into two parts. In those subjects, students will have a one minute pause between parts 1A and 1B or 2A and 2B. As on paper and pencil exams, the pause between parts does not count against the student's testing time for either part and students can't work on their exam during that time. So when, whenever there's a break, it's a break. So you won't be able to continue to work uh, during e either break, whether it's a 20 minute break or a one minute pause. Free response questions in the digital exam experience. You're gonna type your responses directly into the application your work is going to be saved to your device automatically while the exam is running. You will not be uploading any files during testing. You will not be submitting any handwritten work during this administration of the digital AP exam. Some free response questions are centered on the screen with the entire question and text entry box all in one column. Uh, most free response questions though display stimulus and other question material on the left and the prompt and the text entry box on the right. Some questions are answered in parts over several, over separate screens and others are answered all on one screen. Some additional features, the questions that have sources or documents, the DBQs in the histories, the synthesis question in the English language and composition and the seminar part B, a student can select any of the documents to display on the left while composing the response on the right. Basic formatting tools will be available, bold, italics, underline, superscript and subscript, undo and redo special characters, and cut, copy, and paste. Submitting an exam confirmation. When the exam is over, students' answers will be submitted automatically during the upload process. Students will see the following screen and they should not try to click anything. Refresh the page or exit the app. Basically, when you see this screen, stand back and let the computer, let the AP digital exam do its thing. Successful submission means you see this screen. An incomplete submission 
is this screen. Okay, so if this, if you see this screen, what you are asked to do is right now follow these steps in order to complete your answer submission. And don't freak out because, like we said in the previous one of the previous slides, your answers and everything are going to be continually saved. You'll see a message here when we receive your work. Don't worry, your answers have been saved to this device. So you want to reconnect, so check your internet connection, and try to submit your answers by clicking try again. If that didn't work, if you're online and your submission still fails, close the app, reopen it, and then click try again. And if that doesn't work, the last resort is to contact College Board. Submitting an exam, there's been technical difficulties. So here's what you should do if your submission fails and you can't connect any way or anyhow and you, you just can't get it you can't try get, every time you try again to submit it, it still doesn't go through so once the internet connection is reestablished again you're trying again uh, the answers will resume uploading when that process is complete you'll see your confirmation screen hooray again if that doesn't work you're going to make sure that you are connected to the computer and try again if that still doesn't work you should click the return to home page link from that link, from the home page, you should close the app, reopen it, and try again. If none of these things work, then within 24 hours after the end of the exam, you should call customer service at the number provided. Important, and they said this lots of times in all the trainings, students should not call customer service immediately. So be calm, try all the steps and you should keep trying the above steps. If after 24 hours they aren't able to upload their answers, then that you should call customer service. Basically, if you do call right away, what they're gonna have you do is do all the steps anyway and, and tell you to wait. So here are some likely testing issues with solutions closed exam. So the app crashes or you accidentally close it during testing. Oh no, what do we do? You restart the testing app. Relaunch the app and hit resume testing to get back to the question you were on. Unsolvable technical problem. If the student runs into a technical problem that they can't resolve during testing, you should exit and relaunch the app. Exit the app. If you are able to relaunch the app, you should hit resume testing to go back to the question you were on. If there is a testing disturbance, the student counters a disturbance for example, a, an extended power outage or any other issue that keeps them from doing their best on the exam, students can request a makeup by going to myap.collegeboard.org and request your makeup exam there. Important, the testing timer will continue counting down while the app is closed. So I hope this all helps you on test day or get ready for test day and that the technology is the least of your your issues you shouldn't even be thinking about the tech you should be focusing on the information on the test and with that being said good luck and have a great day